Okay, well, thank you for being here. I don't know if I need the green light to start talking from somebody. Well, Eric is here. I guess he can give me, he's giving me the thumbs up, right? <laughs> um, I know the previous talk went a little over. Um, so let me get these things started. Okay, um, yeah, so I'm gonna get it started. Uh, the title of my talk is The Urban Sketches Movement. I look back at 15 years showing the world one drawing at a time. So when Urban Sketches started more than 15 years ago, it was just an online group in a remote corner of the internet. And in, in its original presence, this was a group for all the sketchers out there who love to draw the cities where they live and visit, from the window of their homes, from a cafe at a park, standing on a street corner, always on location, not from photos or memory. That's what I wrote in this uh, first online group that I started. And this group wasn't alone uh, in the internet. There were other groups that were also focusing on sketching. But for some reason, while other communities uh, dedicated to sketching and sketching, from life lost the steam over the years. Our, our community has grown in leaps and bounds, blossoming in ways I could have never imagined. So how did that happen? That's something I ask myself <laughs> quite often. How did that happen? And you could probably go to chat GPT and ask that question and get the answer. <laughs> but you decided to come here instead of been out there drawing beautiful Auckland. So I really appreciate that you're giving me your attention today. So let me tell you how I came to plant the seed uh, that has grown into this awesome community and organization. My name is Gabriel Campanario. Uh, people call me Gabi, spelled G-A-B-I. This is a younger, less wise and chubbier version of myself back in the late 2000s. And there I am doing the urban sketching thing, right? <laughs> in the middle of the street, holding my pocket sketchbook and drawing. This was uh, in Seattle, where I had moved uh, for a job opportunity at the Seattle Times. I've been in newspapers as an editorial, illustrator, infographic artist, art director, you name it, everything you can do that has to do with gra graphic design applied to newspapers, I've, I've done that. So when I moved to Seattle, and I think you, many of you will relate to this, uh, or some of you may relate to this, I, I had told myself, well, I really wanna get back to sketching because that was a lot of fun when I did it as a teenager, right? And, and I also wanna improve my drawing skills. I want to become a better artist. After all, I'm in, in a visual communications job and it will only help me to be a better artist, to, to improve my drawing skills from life. So I picked a pocket sketchbook and started drawing everything. And as you can see in this sketch of mine from my pocket sketchbook, you can see my hand, my backpack, and I'm riding the bus in Seattle and I'm drawing. <laughs> So uh, this became a daily habit for me. And I was drawing people taking the bus, a commuting. I was drawing places in Seattle that I had never seen before because I had just moved there. When you go to a new place, everything looks new and exciting, right? When we travel, it's, I would say when you travel, it's much more exciting to draw because everything is new. But then the same street you see every day around the corner in your city is like, oh my gosh, you know, that doesn't sound interesting, look interesting anymore, right? So, so it was arriving to a new city that uh, really uh, excited me about and motivated me to draw. And then these drawings I was doing, this was 2006, 2007, I just started publishing them online. And at the time I was also excited uh, when we moved to Seattle to have this thing called Wi-Fi <laughs> uh, because I could, uh, I remember before we lived in Northern Virginia in Washington DC, and I remember we still had the modem, right? So you had to go to the computer and 
the modem would make that noise, you know, to be on the internet. And now when we moved to Seattle, it's like, oh my gosh, finally we can do this router thing. Uh, and I had my MacBook and I could be every, anywhere in the house with my MacBook uh, doing internet things. And I remember this day I was in the garage, my kids were playing outside and I was in the lab. So I was supposed to watch over them instead of being on the internet, but you know, you get distracted. Um, and, and I found this website called flickr.com. And I like to say, this is why I, this is why I am the founder of urban sketches is because I found the button that said create group. <laughs> and then I found that button and I go, wow, this is exciting. I can actually create a group. And instead of like going to the pages of all these other artists who were sharing drawings from the cities, maybe we can all put them in the same spot. It would save me time. And of course, I'm somebody who likes to draw like all of you, but I also like to see drawings uh, that other people are making. So this was very much an impulse. As I was telling you, I was with my Mac and say, oh, create group. And on this platform, Flickr.com, which already exists and the group is still there. There's still a thriving community of people on Flickr uh, who use the, the original Urban Sketchers group. I had already, uh, you were also able to uh, add contacts to your list. Like later on, we did it on Facebook or, on, or like we do now on Instagram where you follow people. So I had already accumulated a few contacts, maybe a hundred, I don't remember, or 300 over the course of six or seven months. And so I invited them to join the group after I went create group and then invite people. So <laughs> I invited all my contacts. And by the end of the day, I had 100, I think 101 people had joined my Urban Sketches group on Flickr. And I was like, yeah, so excited. And then I, some of them had started to put their drawings in this online pool, online gallery. Some of these people um, have become friends for life and some of them are here, like Simonetta Capecchi from Naples, Italy. That's where I met her on Flickr. Uh, Paul Histon, this guy who does these amazing 360 degree drawings. I met him on Flickr. And, and then I, of course, when you create group, you have to just put some words there to explain what the group is about, right? So, that's what I wrote, what I told you before. This is a group for all the sketches out there who love to draw the cities where they live and travel from the window of their homes, from a cafe, always on location, not from photographs. I, was, I didn't really give that much thought. I thought, well, how am I going to describe what this is about? And then I came up with some bullet points of what kind of drawings I wanted to see people share here because I didn't want people to start sharing like Figure drawing uh, drawings, which are amazing, but they are not, in my view, urban sketches, right? Urban sketches are drawings we do from life that capture a sense of place and time. And this was my, my bullets. You did a drawing on location, not from photos or memory. And I said, adding color or a few details later. This is something that everybody has super analyzed that manifesto, right? Trying to understand what it means. So, <laughs> so I said, adding color is okay. Uh, uh, on site doesn't necessarily mean outdoors. You can draw from a coffee shop, pub, or grocery store, or any other building. Some people email me and said, Oh, I live, it's very cold where I live. You know, I can't go outside to draw. I said, Well, just draw from inside, but you know, uh, it doesn't have, it can be, can be indoors, right? And I did say the subject has to be primarily urban. Uh, and that's why I also came up with the name Urban Sketchers and Urban Sketchers because we all live in towns or cities. So we, that's our main subject right away, you know, everything we see where we live. And the word uh, urban comes from Latin, urbs, uh, which is, means related to city, related to a town. Uh, I also said draw, drawings of people are okay as long as they are in, the, in an urban setting. What I meant by that is, is if you are just doing a portrait, that doesn't have a context of, of being capturing a moment in the life of the city. If it's a portrait of somebody that is riding the bus, yes. But if it's a portrait uh, in your studio just for artistic exercise, that, that, that's why I phrased that. It wasn't really well phrased too much, but anyway. And then I said, you should have said in what city you did the drawing because my interest was in seeing other cities through there from all these artists. 
And, uh, and after I created that and I found the button, I went to my blog. <laughs> Blogs were very popular at the time. And I put a blog post and I said, Urban Sketch is a flipper. And I kind of explained, I enjoy drawing people and places in Seattle. So I've started this group and go join it, right? Uh, and I remember that time well, as I was telling you before that I was in my garage. This is the view from my garage, looking out to the cul-de-sac where we live. And that's my, those are my kids uh, who at the time were one year old and three years old. And now one is in college and the other one starts college this summer. So it's amazing how time flies, right? But I do remember that moment because I sketched it, right? Which is one of the greatest benefits of sketching. It's not just making a drawing. It's just capturing a moment that then you'll remember because it will be burned into your memory, right? Uh, so that, that brings a lot of memories. So I, I think as I was sketching more and more, I realized that the benefits of sketching were, as I said, went beyond the artistic act. Sketching is a way to learn and discover cities, big and small, where we live and travel. It's a way to see the world in, and when you and learn about the world, um, when you, I, th I think you've noticed this, when you look at the world with the mindset of the sketcher, you start noticing things because you're paying more attention. And this has been said many times, learning to draw is learning to see. Um, and I don't know if it happens to you, but you know, sometimes I'm maybe walking on the street and even if you're not a sketching, you're drawing in your head, you know, you're looking at the way the light hits a building, the silhouette of the skyline, the shape of a tree. We draw to see, to learn, to understand the places where we live and everything that happens around us. You can't do urban sketching by drawing from photographs. Why? Because you need to witness a time and place to draw. Drawing from progress is an amazing exercise, and I don't have anything against it, but it's not urban sketching. Urban sketching is about witnessing a place and a moment in time. So if, if you don't have that intent to learn and understand a place and a community, you can still make great drawings, right? Uh, of buildings, you know, you can make amazing postcards, but but I think you miss out. You miss out on the experience and on that learning experience. So anyway, as I was telling you, the discovery of a sketching um, in that particular moment of my life was really transformational. I mean, I've heard a sketcher say, oh yeah, sketching changed my life. And I say, well, it did change my life too. Um, a couple of years after starting that group on Flickr, I decided to start a different project, uh, a blog, where these sketches I was meeting online could share their drawings and tell stories of their cities, uh, just as I was starting to share stories of Seattle on my own blog. And this is the Urban Sketches blog, which I launched in 2008, November 1st of 2008. And this was, um, this was a blog where I specifically reach my favorite artists, my favorite sketchers <laughs> from all over the world. I, I wanted to create a, um, if you, if, if a window into the world from not just of good skilled drawings, but that would represent different cultures, different parts of the world. Uh, because of my background in journalism, um, I love the idea of having these artist correspondents all over the world showing me what's happening in those cities with their sketches. Uh, so I emailed them at the early October in 2008 and I said, hey, I'm gonna start this blog, Urban Sketchers. Would you wanna collaborate and share your sketches of Lisbon, of Singapore, of wherever they lived in the blog? And I said, if you are interested, participating in this blog, send me a photo of yourself, ideally a sketching, send me one of your drawings, and send me a, leave, a, a brief biography, a, a statement about why you draw and, and what's unique about drawing where you live. And 
it was kind of a leap of faith because I thought, I mean, I had already established some sort of online communication with these folks, but I didn't, didn't know any of them in person. Uh, and then I, the replies started to arrive. The first person was Samantha Saza, who at the time was living in San Francisco, and then eventually then she moved to Istanbul. Uh, and yeah, she, right away, she sent me her sketch, her photo, and her bio. And I go, okay, well, I'm going to just post it right away. And I, I put a date to the blog launch. I said, it's coming, coming, I said, coming uh, November 1st. And this was like October 7th. So I put a, 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 the first correspondent, Samantha Saza from San Francisco. So the rest of the people I was emailing, they were already seeing, oops, they were already seeing that people were joining. So that created a little more buzz and excitement. The next day, the, uh, more people would, would join. Uh, these are some screenshots uh, of how the blog looked early on. And on the banner of the blog, I really tried to, for that image to really right away tell the story of what this was about. I put, uh, that actually is Simonetta Capecchi at the top, sketching in, I think, Venice. Uh, and then with this slogan of see the world one drawing at a time. Um, and then down here, I have another one uh, from an artist in Germany who unfortunately is no longer with us, Florian. Um, and I, I thought this, this writes away, you know, when you see that and then you start reading, it, it, it was very easy to get the message of what this website was about. Um, these are the examples of the correspondence biographies that I was posting on the blog. There's Samantha Zaza, there's Simonetta who is here. She is the correspondent that is documenting the event. So that's her introduction. And she sent me this beautiful drawing of Naples from, from where she lives. Uh, to the other side of the street, this was Pedro and this one. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to write a press release too. Why not? <laughs> so I wrote a press release and I sent it out into the world. And I think this, this PR uh, website communications picked it up. And I wrote, uh, Urban Sketchers Blog captures city life around the world. Talented artists, correspondents from around the world will share their sketchbooks starting November 1st on this address. A new group of that will showcase, job, will showcase drawings from the cities on at least four different continents. And then I had some quotes there uh, by Nina Johansson from Stockholm saying, drawing a city isn't just capturing on paper, it's really about getting to know it, to feel it, to make it your own. We have really, as the urban sketching community has grown so much, I know we, we all care about the tools we use and the pens and the watercolors, but I hope we are not missing the point. You know, the point is to learn about where you live through drawing, right? Um, and these are other banners because I would change the banner of the website every week to keep it fresh. So every week I was basically introducing a new sketcher on the website. This is still from Sydney. You know her, right? Uh, that's her sketching in a trip in, in Europe. She's in a part of that drawing. Uh, Dar Seder is from Jakarta, Indonesia. Tia is from Singapore. George from Sao Paulo. So with this blog, I really wanted to capture that idea that this is a global outlet for drawings. Uh, it's not just talented artists from one city sharing amazing drawings, right? I didn't want the blog to be all the great artists who live in New York sharing their sketches, you know? <laughs> I had to kind of, or even Lisbon, you know, there were so many in Lisbon. I, well, I can't keep adding people from Lisbon. I want to add people from other parts of the world, right? I was very excited when I found Murray here in New Zealand. We go, oh yes, New Zealand. I have somebody now from Auckland in, on, the, on the website. Uh, Germany, Marina, who is also here from Tel Aviv. Uh, she goes in LA. So this, this will change every, every week. And then the day came, November 1st, when I had said, blog coming November 1st. And I emailed all of them. 30 artists had agreed to be part of the blog. So I had 30 people. And then I, 
and I, I gave them the keys to the car. I gave them the passport or whatever they needed to start publishing. And I say, okay, well, here we go, November 1st. And then it was up to them to start sharing their work, right? And La Pen from Barcelona shared a drawing of the Gaudí building. And Zinia from Moscow shared a drawing uh, from Red Square. Those were the two first drawings on the blog. And by the end of the day, there were 28 drawings from many different countries and many different artists from those 30 core groups who started. And then the next day there were more, and the next day there were more. There was not a day on the blog where there were not new drawings, perhaps until 2013 or 14. And why did that happen? Is because 2013, 14, then we started getting Facebook and other platforms, and then blogs started to kind of lose esteem as the places where people would share their work. So, so the blog certainly went through its up, has gone went through its ups and downs over the years. And because of this website, this also picked the attention of different media outlets in cities around the world. They started seeing urban sketchers, like, so we got a write-up. Uh, this one, a whole page, like, column is talking about sketchers. This was on the Artist Magazine. This was in a like, magazine uh, in Italy. This was in Bangkok, the Bangkok Post. Uh, took notice that an artist from Bangkok called Asni was part of the correspondence. Uh, so basically, the, the, the idea of sketching and showing cities was starting to, to really uh, spread. And um, let's see, where am I now? Okay, so as I was doing all this, I thought, wow, what, what is what defines urban sketching? the way I have started these websites, you know? And, and again, kind of impulsively, I, I can, uh, can't really say, oh yeah, I give this, gave this a lot of thought or anything like that. I thought, well, I'm gonna write a manifesto. Uh, almost like as a mental exercise for myself also, of what is it that is common to this genre, to this type of art that we're doing? Because people were asking me and also there was a lot of questions. Well, is this an urban sketch? Is, what is it, right? And I thought, well, I'm going to uh, write this and I will share it with the blog. And I shared it on the blog. This was in maybe early 2009. I, I can't remember. And I almost like put it up there for comment, right? And these were the points. The first one you may be familiar with. And we draw a location indoors or out, capturing what we see from direct observation. I mean, this is kind of the basic tenet of what we do. We're doing observational drawings. And you can see us all there. We're out there in the elements, or you can also be indoors uh, again, but uh, capturing what we see. And this, this was a very important to me, again, because of my background uh, as a journalist. These drawings are telling stories of places. They're not just uh, visual representation. In this case, uh, the stories how a historic bridge is being is being is going through some construction repair transformation. In this case, uh, it was our drawings, our record of time and place. Every time that uh, Kumi Matsukawa was going out there to draw uh, these towers, he was recording a moment in the construction of this giant tower in Tokyo. Uh, we're truthful to the scenes we witnessed. Um, Again, this may be also related to my, my, my background as a journalist, but I, I was interested in art that is an honest capture of what you're seeing with your own style, through your own filter, through your own viewpoints, but uh, with your own wonky lines and crooked perspectives, that doesn't matter. What matters is that you have the intent of capturing what you're seeing. Uh, medium again. I don't. The last thing I want <laughs> are the Da Vinci process people close. Well, <laughs> the last thing I want is everybody to draw with the same brush and create the same style of drawings. <laughs> um, any drawing, any style, any tools are good, right? That's the beauty of sharing uh, our own personal perspectives of the world. So I 
did write that we use any kind of media and chase our own individual styles. And there's a drawing by Tia from Singapore where the it's it's an ink drawing with uh, coffee, you know, uh, <laughs> doing the wash. And then we support each other and draw together. I, I, there, there was such a big element of community. And after the community started online, there was this impulse of, well, I want to meet these people in person, right? So I met the, my, my, my sketcher pals in Seattle, and this was our first official Seattle group gathering. And we share our drawings online. Um, and I use this photo from Jeremy Michel in Belgium because obviously we didn't invent our observational drawing. This is a practice that has been uh, done for, forever, right? And many architects, illustrators, designers uh, have had sketchbooks full of urban sketches. In this case, Gerard, Gerard uh, he told me once, like, I was so excited because I had all these sketchbooks and now I can put them online and people can see them, you know? And the final overarching principle of showing the world one drawing at a time. And, and that's a photo from uh, gathering in Barcelona. So this, this, in this journey, I was also definitely not working in a vacuum. I was influenced by other artists. And a big influence was this artist in Lisbon called Eduardo Salavisa. Again, he's not with us anymore. Uh, he had a website called Diario Grafico. Diario Grafico translates more like a graphic journal, right? And he had, doc he had researched so many artists all over the world who were also doing these type of sketches. Um, and he contacted me in Seattle because he wanted to add me to the list of artists. And I have this little video of him that I recorded in, um, in Zaragoza in 2009. I, I hope this will play. <laughs> Okay, I wanted, to, I wanted to share that video with Eduardo. Uh, I don't know if you were able to read the subtitles, but he's talking about how when we use the sketchbooks, uh, it doesn't matter, it's not whether one drawing is good or bad, it's the, it's the collection of the sketchbook that matters and how a sketchbook is, is a record of time and place. Um, so I really, I really, and of course this is, and I, I wanted to share that from 2009 because that event in Zaragoza, Spain, where I was invited to go talk about urban sketchers. Up till then, urban sketchers was this online community that was really starting to, to grow and to be known. But it wasn't anything more than that. It was just a bunch of artists online and a practice that was becoming trendy, if you will. So, um, Sometimes I ask myself or I ask people, well, did we need a nonprofit organization to, to get together and sketch together? What is the point? You don't need an organization to meet. I mean, you meet people online now with social media just organically. But after I went to that event in Zaragoza where I saw and I met for the first time other artists who I have invited to the Urban Sketches blog, I thought, wow, this is really neat, you know? Uh, and perhaps we should do something about it. <laughs> uh, so I asked the other correspondents on the world, what would you do with this? Should we be an agency of illustrators? Should we be a nonprofit organization? What, you know, I, I f also fear perhaps that some, some, somebody for 
commercial purposes, was going to steal our name, you know, of Urban Sketchers and then do something different with it, right? So how can we protect this thing that we have all started? And in our email exchanges with the correspondents, the idea of doing a nonprofit uh, uh, was well received. And I said, if we do that, we can do events like this one. I just came back from Spain, which was really awesome. Um, and we can do, as an organization, you have more cloud to do things, right? You can do uh, events, you can do classes, you can do exhibits. Um, you're just more than a bunch of people online who do the same thing. And so I launched myself into it. We incorporated Urban Sketches as a nonprofit in 2009. We, uh, the original board of directors of the nonprofit had like 17 people because we didn't know what we were doing and we, everybody wanted to do something. And then it was like, oh my gosh, how, how are we going to manage these 17 people trying to talk? There was no Zoom or anything like that. There was just email. And then we found this Google Wave, where, which was a strange way of communicating. Uh, but anyway, we made it work. You know, we, we got the nonprofit register and all the documents. And then also at the same time, it just so happened that uh, a school in, of art in Portland, Oregon, invited me to go do some sketching class. And I said, well, I just came back from Spain from this event. Why don't I invite other sketchers and we do a little something bigger. And that was the first international symposium. That's how it all started. <laughs> and we had 75 people sign up for that symposium. And, and now we're here so many years later. Um, and I, I like to think that because we gave this idea of urban sketching a more organizational frame, we've been able to do more things and, and than we would have if it had just continued as a as an organic, organic online community. One of the first things after the first symposium that we started doing as an organization was workshops. This is the first workshop, 2011, uh, after the, the, this one symposium, and this was another one. This is from 2016, I just happened to have these, these banners. Um, and now, I mean, all, so much time has happened that many chapters of the organization are celebrating their own milestones. We celebrated our 10th milestone in Seattle in 2017, and somebody uh, got a cake, and we already had our logo, and that's a photo of, uh, the, I think, the first meeting or the second meeting uh, in Seattle, and some of those people are still part of the group. Uh, the, the, the sketches in Portugal where Eduardo, the guy I show you, uh, did their 10th anniversary also uh, in 2019 and, and I was there with them. So this has been really moving and amazing. <laughs> uh, and, and I like to say, yes, I, 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 I certainly threw myself and put a lot of hours at the beginning, but I can certainly take credit of where the idea and how many, much work many other volunteers have done at the, in the early years, my, my wife used to tell me that, yeah, that Urban Sketches was like our third child. But, uh, <laughs> but then the child uh, was, uh, you know, reached enough age that I could just let it go, you know. And, <laughs> uh, and that happened pretty much after the single person in 2015. I stepped down from the board and I continued to be available for whatever they asked me to do. But, but this is not my thing. It's it, not, not a personal project. I mean, it, it, I am one one more sketcher of the community, right? And look what has happened. You know, this is from Portland in 2010, 75 people. I think we, we had 200 there, San Domingo, 150. And then it started growing. Singapore, we did Singapore. Very big, Manchester, Chicago, Porto, Amsterdam. And Amsterdam was like incredible. And then now we are here in Oakland. So, and this is, this is how many chapters are now all over the world. Well, I, this is a screenshot from the website. And it says chapters in 394 cities uh, and in over 60 countries. Over 60 countries, 60 countries, six zero. Yeah. And of course, you know, we have basically fueled this trend of urban sketching to such a level that now there's books about urban sketching and it's basically a thing, 
you know. Mm -hmm. So congratulations to all of you for <laughs> being part of this and, and thank you for your time and I'm here for questions. So this is this is my I hope I gave you enough of a historic art of where we come from. <laughs> questions? Uh, uh, this is on the website. If you go to the website at urbansketches.org. Uh, oh, yeah, Eric is here. He's the events director, so he can also uh, for Eric. But yeah, this is a screenshot from the website, so you can go there and see that. And the map is interactive, so you can zoom in and find your chapter. So, and, and the people are still uh, putting their, they're putting up their face and their name slots small bio and lots of their sketches each person well that has changed you know the blog that i started uh, is not active in that fashion anymore mm -hmm. there is uh, instead there is a global sketchbook part of the website where you, everybody can send their drawings when i started the blog is a it was limited to my handpicked artists it was a you know it was an editorial project that i started and i helped give visibility to the idea, but that has changed over okay, the because I'm so new. Very, very right, new. right, right, right. Just a couple months. Okay? Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, and, and that's why I'm here. And, and I've been seeing the sketches of the people here. Uh, they just do something to my heart. And I not know anything, anything, anything. Right. Is saying, maybe it's already done. Is there somewhere those that would want to send their Auckland sketches? It's just, because Auckland would like to have these sketches and we could use them in our books and things like that and give them credit or not as they like. Is there something already going for this? You should talk to the administrators of the Auckland Urban Sketches Group. And I mean, Eric is here from Auckland and and they can they can they, they can help you out and guide you to where you yeah, can do that. Something like that already set up or yes. set up? Um, beginning to. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Is your job related to sketching now? Do you still my, my job as I was telling you, I've been in newspapers as an editorial uh, newsroom artist for 30 years and um, for 12 years. Um, up till 2021, I also uh, wrote and sketched a weekly column at the newspaper called Seattle Sketcher, uh, but I, I stopped doing it in, in the middle of the pandemic in 2021. So I'm not a sketching professionally, if you will, uh, mm, but my job as an editorial illustrator involves drawing for sure. So more questions, Christina? Right. And newspapers are getting rid of cartoons. Do you think that this is something that can rise out of the, I don't want to say ashes, but it's yes. an underground thing published in its own right. as newspapers are receiving it? Well, I do think uh, news, unfortunately, um, it's something that costs a lot of money to, to produce because you need reporters, you need editors, you need photographers, artists. But uh, with the internet and the proliferation of basically free information, uh, we are now kind of spoiled, right? So many people um, are not subscribing or paying for their news. And uh, that's why many newsrooms have shrunk the advertising classified ads and all that that used to pay for newspapers and stuff uh, it has gone online as well so it's an industry that has a struggle and in your communities you've probably seen the local newspaper become thinner and thinner and thinner uh, and all that and and certainly the art in newspapers is one of the things that has been eliminated and like cartoons and all that i do think that there could be a resurgence of drawing as a storytelling medium because um with technology we live in an era that even even a video or a photograph somebody can say oh but that's fake that's manipulated right so this is this is really uh terrible to think but if, if you can't trust the source of that photograph of that story then what do we have you know 
Um, and I think drawings, you can't really fake them, you know? <laughs> I mean, you, you're there, you're sketching, and uh, there's no point in then going to Photoshop and trying to alter it, you know? It's, it's a very raw visual expression of what you're seeing. And I think we all, as consumers, as readers, uh, are moved to drawings in a different way. When I was doing my column at the newspaper, I would get emails from readers who said, wow, I've never been to that part of Seattle and I love seeing your drawings or that. Drawings also evoke a lot of emotion and memories. And it is because a sketch is never finished or complete. It can't show you everything. So I think as a viewer, you participate in that experience more because you complete the sketch with your own imagination. So we can, we all have a different reaction to a sketch. For some people, is the color. For some people, is the line, the, the subject matter of the drawing. A photograph is 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 harder for photographers to to infuse that personal style into a photograph because it's mediated by the machine. But lines is just everybody. We all draw with different lines. You know, it's just very different. So. I want to believe that there's going to be a resurgence of drawing as a storytelling medium. And that's what one of my recent projects is starting a publishing uh, imprint for to publish books by sketchers because I believe in it. And we'll see, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I certainly see the interest in people wanting to sketch. I don't know about the interest of people in wanting to see drawings from other people and read the stories through drawing. That's kind of uh, still to be told. And then it's also so overwhelming, you know, because online we're consuming all these sketches in this little square in our phone. <laughs> and I am a print guy, you know, I love the printed matter. And that's why I got into newspapers. I just love that after a day you produce a newspaper where everything is printed and you can hold it in your hands. And like our sketchbooks, you know, it's that physical thing. And I love that. So, um, I don't know, I can go on and on. I don't know if I'm answering your question, but but yeah, I I, I, I encourage uh, sketchers who are interested in storytelling, do your work, pitch it to a magazine, pitch it to a newspaper, and you know, you're not gonna get rich because newspapers don't have that much money, but you know, um, but I think I, I think there's certainly something unique about it. Uh, NFTs, you know, I don't, I have no idea of that entire world. I know there's some spammers going around uh, telling you, oh, I want your sketches in NFT. So I would say, be careful because that's not real. I mean, I had an, somebody email me, I'm going to pay you $3,000 for every NFT of these sketches. And they even attach the, the sketches to the message. And I go, nah, this is, this is like, this is a scam. So I have I can't speak to the viability of NFTs or any of that. I don't think so. I mean, if you think about it, paper and pens and drawings are a time-tested technology. <laughs> so I think there it's here to stay. Any more questions? I think we're probably very hungry. So, and you've listened to a lot of talks, but anyway, I'm here I'll do it at the event. If you want to approach me, uh, I'd love to talk to you and see your art. And if you come to Seattle, uh, let me know and, and we can sketch together. Thank you. Thank you.